If you got a bag of Uts from Publix, Walmart, or WD, it got put there from a man with a working man's PhD. How y'all doing, gang? I'm here on Jackpot Time coming at you. On Friday evening, it's a little bit past 5.30, and um, I'm done. The work week is over with. And I want to talk a little bit of Gamecock football real quick, but I also wanted to let you guys know that over on the community tab, there is a poll. Yes, for the first time in the history of the Carolina Jackpot channel, I have put up a JP poll. Yeah, it's not a juice poop poll, it's a jackpot poll. Um, there's four choices on there. You have noon games, afternoon games, and evening games for tomorrow. I want to do some live streaming, and basically I put the game that I think is the marquee game for each one of those time slots down. It doesn't really have to just exactly be that game, but it'll be on during that time. I'm interested in coming and doing that and hanging out with y'all tomorrow, so let me know which one you want me to do so the Gamecocks don't have a game tomorrow. There's also a fourth option on there, which uh, if you're a dick, you'll select it, and that would be take the weekend off. Nobody watches you anyway. I know you're not going to do that one. South Carolina sitting here at four and three, heading into their second bye week of the year, and there are just you know, there's a ton of uh, projections out there, right, for the Gamecocks and where they're going to go as far as bowls or where they could go as far as bowls and uh, one numbskull publication, USA Today Sports, even has the Gamecocks missing a bowl, finishing up at five and seven, which mm, not so sure that I agree with that. Uh, I want to talk about each one of these games that we've got coming up, what I think is going to happen, what I think the final record is going to likely be, and I'm going to be as realistic as I possibly can here. But before I get into all that, real quick, if you're new around here, consider saying true around here, subscribe to the Carolina Jackpot channel. We have a heck of a good time here um, doing college football things and college sports things <coughs> all year long. We also get sideways and do some other uh, topics as well. So next week, South Carolina takes on Texas A&M in williams Bryce Stadium, a top 15 team right now. They're taking on LSU tomorrow night in uh, uh, College Station. Both teams uh, with one loss on the year. Both teams with uh, zero SEC losses on the year. I don't think anybody had these two being undefeated this far into the season on their bingo card, yet here we are. Uh, Texas A&M has quietly uh, amassed an undefeated record in conference play. LSU um, has made a little bit more of a splash, I think. Uh, I think LSU, obviously, between the two teams, probably has the biggest and best win, that being over Ole Miss uh, a couple of Saturdays ago in Baton Rouge. They were down by double digits in that ball game and uh, showed uh, no quit, uh, no uh, signs of faltering, no signs of folding up like a cheap lawn chair from Roses. They uh, punched Ole Miss in the mouth, came back, went to overtime, and won the game there in Baton Rouge. Very impressive. Garrett Nussmeyer has been getting better and better every week. Um, and also, I want to talk about them real quick here, too. <laughs> They're fake news, okay? They're fake news, and their fans, look, we got a few LSU fans who are over here, and, and I like the most of you. I really do. Uh, but some of your fans are just downright delusional, and they're dumb. And uh, Pro Football Focus put a thing out, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, highlighting the LSU starting offensive line, and they've given up zero sacks on the season. And uh, that was kind of bandied about. And one of the Gamecock players, Demetrius Baum Knight, uh, retweeted this uh, with the laughing emoji. He's laughing because it's not true. Uh, LSU has given up sacks this year. <coughs> they gave up two sacks against South Carolina. They gave up half a sack to Bam Martin Scott. And they gave up a half sack and a half to um, Kyle Kennard. So... The LSU fans are trying to cope with this because they're butt hurt uh, over uh, Demetrius Knight saying, 
are laughing at the pro football focus thing. You know, pro football focus has been called into scrutiny a little bit the past couple of years. You know, people tended to really take it serious there for a while. And then now a lot of the stuff that they put out has holes poked in it. And this one, you can poke holes in it as well. Okay, well, we find out, okay, well, one of the sacks really didn't count because it was on a two-point conversion. Okay, so it doesn't count, but it's it's there. It's in the it's in the box score. I'm not going to include that here, but you go to the box score of the game and look and see. Yeah, they, they had sacks. Um, now, then they try to give on some other technicality. Well, it was another offensive lineman that gave up that sack. Well, it wasn't. The, uh, the starting offensive lineman for that day. Okay, well, what the starting offensive lineman for that day? Okay, was it the starting O-line that you have now that's not giving up any sacks, or was it anybody that started at any point in time during the season? It's horseshit. Just put out something that is factual and tell how many sacks are actually given up, and hey, this ranks in the top two in the nation. Look at LSU's offensive line. They're really, really fucking good. How about that? And, 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 this, and, and let that be it. But no, this pro football fuck us has to put something into some kind of weird narrative. How, how, explain to me this. How is it that a sack doesn't count when you do it on a two-point conversion, but when Judas fucking Wells takes a pass and runs into the end zone with it, but he fumbles before he gets there, he's credited with 66 yards receiving on a play that he fumbled on. How does any of that make sense? How is, he, how is he credited with receiving yards on a play that he fumbled on? That he turned the ball over to the other team on? But this don't count as a sack. It's all, it, it's all speculative horseshit, and this is where we're at in this day and age <coughs> in college football. Rules get amended on the fly. Uh, polls are created on the fly. Um, cherry pick stats are used on the fly. Put on some kind of damn pie chart, and everybody goes absolutely nuts about it before actually digging into the real facts. And then they get butt hurt when somebody calls them out on bullshit. And I'm not just talking about pro football fuck us. You can find it all over the internet. You find it all over the internet. It ain't hard, and you won't have to look very long. You don't have to look very long. So I'll give LSU credit. They have a really good offensive line. They have not given up no sacks all year. They all, never, never mind. I don't even go there with them. They were lucky to win in South Carolina. They were real lucky to win in Columbia. And it's not nothing they did. It's us falling apart. And it was the game being given to them by the officials. But I moved on for that because, you know, we, we can't, there's nothing we can do about it at this point. But they know that. They know that. And they're tired of hearing it. They're tired of hearing about it. And um, that's just the way it is. Uh, but, but anyway. Um, yeah. Um, I think they've gotten a lot better since that game. Let's just say that. They've gotten a lot better. Um, and... I think they have the better quarterback. They have a better quarterback situation. They obviously had a better win. Not that it's Texas A&M's fault. I mean, they can only beat who's on their schedule. So, that said, um, you know, I, I think LSU is going to win this game. Now, Carolina Jackpot wants <coughs> Texas A&M to win it. And it doesn't have anything to do with like it or not like it at LSU. It has to do with, from a situational perspective, I'd like Texas A&M to roll into Columbia undefeated. Not that I think it's going to be easier to beat an undefeated team. I think that it's a better situation for them to come in there um, off of a big win primed for a letdown. Anyway, however, I want to talk to you about this one. I don't think we're able to win that game. Uh, I realize it's a home game. It's uh, likely to be a night game. I think it's supposed to be a night game. I don't know. But now they're used to be two weeks out, they would announce start times. Now it's it's like a few days before they're announcing start times. You know, this is hell on somebody who's trying to travel. They need to get it 
together a little bit better than that. Excuse me. But everything that we do well, Texas A&M does well. I think they're going to be able to get some pressure on the Norris Sellers, uh, as everyone has, because our offensive line is horseshit, and I don't think they've done anything to fix it. Uh, and probably are able to make just enough plays on offense to uh, get a victory in Columbia. That's just the way, unfortunately, I see that one. So I don't see that one as a win. The game on the road, I, I give South Carolina about a 25% chance to win that one. The game on the road at Vandy, um, look, Vandy's been a great little story. Here's the thing. They are, they're due to be brought back down to earth. And I'm not, you know, trying to diss on Vandy here. I'm not trying to dunk on them, take a dump on them, shut on them, whatever you want to call it. But the fact of the matter is they don't have the talent that the teams that they're playing have. Eventually, that's going to catch up to them. I put this one at South Carolina with about a 75 to 80 percent chance to win this game. I don't, I, yes, I know San Diego Pavia. He's a bulldog. He's got all this heart. He's got all this machismo. Yada yada yada. Blah blah. He makes everybody around him better. Guess what? Little bulldog. That's what they call him, the little bulldog. Little bulldog. Guess what you gonna have? You gonna have? 11 dogs on the other side are coming after your ass. And they're going to get you. The good thing about South Carolina's defense, if you've noticed, the past few weeks it's played a little bit more disciplined than what you saw earlier in the season. You haven't seen the roughing the passer bullshit. You haven't seen as much of the P.I. bullshit as you saw earlier in the season. And they're starting to get a little bit more disciplined. You have to be disciplined to defend this kind of offense that Vanderbilt's kind of run, this, this kind of high school type rinky-dink thing. And look, I'm not I'm not trying to downplay their high school rinky-dink thing. I mean, it's working for them. It's been working for them to push the ball forward. Hell, if the high school rinky-dink offense would work for us, <coughs> excuse me, I'd like for us to go on ahead and run it. But we don't, well, we don't. We have because we have Fred Flintstone, who's an absolute bumbling idiot, trying to run our offense and not doing a very good job of it. But they have to be able to play assignment football to defend a quarterback like that. And one of the things I like about uh, listening to the Cole Kublik Cube Show is him talking. Of, well, he breaks things down from a player's or a coach's perspective but he puts it in terminology that you can understand as a fan and talked about Dylan Stewart and South Carolina's defensive line and how they had great pocket awareness. And I'm like, what's pocket aware? What's he talking about? And he goes on to explain that's, you know, that, that they understand where the pocket's going, where the pocket's moving to, where uh, the, that the quarterback's going to be. It, 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 instead of you know, being undisciplined like a lot of these young, especially often uh, defensive linemen are, like over pursuing uh, a quarterback, over pursuing a running back. Getting into the backfield is not enough if you're not going to be able to make a play when you get there, or not able to anticipate where that individual is going to be, where your assignment is going to be at. And they're doing a good job of that. Just their discipline and and just their overall disruption of a team's game is why I think South Carolina has a 75 to 80% chance of going on the road and beating Vandy. South Carolina will be able to score on them. And even with the Fred Flintstone offense, they'll still be able to put points on the board on Vandy. Uh, their defense is not good. I mean, they don't stop anybody. So I'm not real worried about that part. You got the home game against Mizzou the next week. Mizzou's caught a lot of flack lately. I, I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with them, knowing that, I mean, they have tremendous potential to do really well. I mean, they're still sitting here with one loss. Everybody's written them off, though. Uh, they see more losses coming. I, I'm sort of in agreement with that, and then especially with their... Uh, quarterback situation, Brady Cook being banged up, got a high x-ray. 
from what I understand, we don't, I mean, I don't know if he's going to play in the game against Alabama. I don't know how long he's going to play. They're starting running backs, gotten kind of banged up too. Um, and, and this team doesn't seem to have, you know, I thought losing Cody Schrader in the offseason, I didn't think it was going to be a big deal because they brought in this Noel guy and they brought Marcus Carroll in from uh, Appalachian State. But much like San Diego Pavia, I think Cody Schrader made everyone around him better. Is San Diego Pavia's, is he 2024's Cody Schrader in the SEC? He may be. He may possibly be. I don't know. That said, uh, Cody Schrader had a lot better pieces around him than San Diego does. So uh, there's that. I I still am leery of this game in that South Carolina and Shane Beamer have gotten out coached by Eli Drinkowitz the past, well, forever. You haven't beaten him. We haven't beaten them since Will Muschamp was in Columbia back in 2018. South Carolina beat them with backup quarterback Michael Skarnecchia. South Carolina hasn't beaten Mizzou with a starting quarterback since 2017. Wow. That was a long time ago. Second week of the season in Columbia, Missouri, in Como. So we're due, but just because you're due doesn't automatically mean you're going to get a win. You've got to go out there and execute. You've got to go out there and get it. But I think South Carolina's defense, once again, is going to cause a lot of disruption for this Missouri offense. I think the kind of offense they run is one that's going to play right into the hands of our defense. And I put South Carolina at a better than 50% chance of winning this game. I want to say a better than 50%. What I, number I want to assign to that, I'm not really sure right now, and a lot of it has to do with Brady Cook, his health, Nate Noel, his health, and health of any other key players that they have on uh, that. Yeah, just going ahead and go. I was here first. Idiot. Uh, people in South Carolina don't know how to treat a four-way stop. They don't know how to use it properly. So therefore, they should put in more traffic lights. Uh, and then when you beat the horn at them, you know, you think they'd at least throw their hand up like, I'm sorry, or flip you off or something. They just ignore you. You know, I, I, want, I want beef. You know, let's, let's go. Game against Wofford the next week is, uh, that's a no-brainer. South Carolina's winning that game easily. That will be, you know, an empty the bench type thing there. Um, actually, they have won three games this year, though. They've won one all of last year. So I guess that's a, a feather in the cap of the Wofford, man. There is one. Uh, and then that last game of the season against Clemson, look, Right now, I'm putting that at about a 25% chance that South Carolina wins that game. Defensively, South Carolina is going to cause Cade Klubnik a lot of problems. There, he, he's going, that, this is going to be the best, by far, defense that he will see the rest of the year. Um, and that also includes that uh, defense from Pitt that we saw last night um, get all over Syracuse. <coughs> South Carolina's defense is better than that. Although I will say Syracuse, that Pitt had a good defense. It's not a South Carolina level defense. Um, that said, they're going to cause him some problems. Um, they're going to shut down Phil Maffa. Uh, possibly take him out of the game. I don't mean take him out of the game like hurt him. I mean take him, at, make him a non-factor in that game. Make K. Klubnik have to start making plays with his arm. And then we're going to just rush the damn hell out of him and put him on the ground a bunch of times. That said, though, <laughs> you, 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 where, where, where are your points going to be scored at? That, see, that's the thing. Despite the fact that um, Clemson's defense seems to have taken a step back this year, that defense still is going to be better then well, I'm not going to say it's going to be better than any of them you're going to face on the schedule remaining. Uh, it, 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 uh, that and Texas a and I'm not not sure where they rank out side by side, but I think they could be somewhat comparable. Close with a lot of talent on that defense. So I think points are going to be at a premium uh, 
in terms of from the South Carolina perspective in this game. So I'm not really sure, uh, you know, what to make of this one. We could end up seeing another game like we saw last year. Uh, another ugly game uh, that muddied up there. But, I mean, that one was muddied up because neither team could move the ball. And this one, I think it's going to be probably muddied up because South Carolina is not going to be able to move the ball. And South Carolina's defense is going to make sure they don't move the ball. So right now I'm putting out at about a 25% chance to win, but, I mean, it's Dow Loggins. I mean, call your friends, dude. Watch it. You know what? Last night I watched Old Dominion play Georgia Southern, and they scored from, like, the three-yard line with a jump pass. And I'm like, a, a freaking jump pass. I mean, that's brilliant. I mean, you know, we've seen that before. That can't be real hard to execute, right? I, you know, why can't a Nick Harbor – not a Nick Harbor, excuse me. Why can't a, uh, a Norris Sellers execute a jump pass? I'm sure that he could. But, you know, dumb fuck won't put it in the playbook. Won't practice it because he's an idiot. I mean, just watch plays that other people score on and draw them up to tailor to your team's specifics and use them. I mean, what would be wrong with that? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Something's going to have to give. Something's going to have to give uh, between now and then, but uh, that's a game I don't think you're going to win unless you can find an offense, and I, I don't know where you're going to find one in four or five weeks. So that's that. I think South Carolina is either finishing 6-6 six and six or 7-5 and five, um, with the seventh win hinging on that Mizzou game. Whether or not they're going to be able to get that win in Columbia – there's a lot of motivation there for South Carolina to get that win. So they should be able to take that one. But you know, you'll, we'll have to see the health of Brady Cook and uh, the health of Nate Noel and staff uh, or and uh, cohorts, excuse me, not staff, uh, are going to be uh, – that's going to have a lot to say in terms of whether you win that game or not. So that's all i got to say about that, uh, you know, Go vote about the live stream. Oh, one more thing. Look, want to get here on a soapbox real quick. Carolina Jackpot's going out tomorrow. I'm going to go early vote because I got to work on that Tuesday. That's election day. And I, I, there's no way that I can fight those lines. I wouldn't be able to get done in time. I wouldn't be able to go early enough uh, to where I, I would be behind all day long on my stuff. I think that uh, personally... A presidential election day should be like Christmas. Everything should be closed, except for hospitals, where everybody has a chance to go vote. Everybody. That would really, uh, that they won't do that. I don't know why. But that would ensure a huge turnout at the polls if everybody was able to go. Um, that said, um, I hope all y'all are planning on voting, if you're old enough, um, and... Make your choice wisely. If you haven't made your choice yet, make your choice. Uh, you've only got, what? You've got less than two weeks to do it. Less, Way less than two weeks. Like a week and a half to do it. I mean, I've already made my choice. And if you've watched any of my live streams, you've watched any of my videos, I mean, you already know who I'm voting for. Uh, I'm voting for Donald J. Trump. And... It's not because uh, I don't like Democrats. It's not because I'm a racist. It's not because of this. It's not because of that. It's not because of the other. Uh, it's because he checks the boxes for me on the things that I feel are important. Okay? So that if you want to vote on the other side, then, you know, that's your deal. Uh, she should be able to check boxes for you, though, on things that you feel are important. But ask yourself before... You make the decision to vote that way. Hey, uh, the past three and a half years, the economy uh, and everything around it in the country has been the shits. Um, so we're going to put someone who's been the left-hand man, so to speak, of the person who was overseeing the country while everything was going to the shits in charge and expect him to make a change. I mean, nah, I mean it doesn't... I mean, if, if Shane Beamer got fired today, I mean, would you promote Dow Loggins to head coach? I mean, that's about that's about what I see that as. Okay? So, 
once again, uh, don't vote that way just because she's not Donald J. Trump, and that's why I'm going to vote for her. It doesn't that doesn't make sense, and that's not a good reason. You need to check the boxes for what you believe in and what you find uh, to be important to you. Um, uh, but that said. Uh, just just make your choice carefully and I'm not trying to convince anyone here on what to do or, or I'm not here to down talk you if you choose to vote a certain way that's that's not what this is about and spare me the well I'm unsubscribing because we this, we this is a sports channel and we don't hear talking about politics if I wanted to watch politics I would watch politics now shut up just shut up with the, all the drama okay we talk about it about once every four years or so. I mentioned some stuff on a live stream here a while back about it. Not like we do a video on it every other day, okay? It's important, and it's here, it's now, and it's the future of our country. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Sorry. If you don't like it, I am so, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, um, that's about all i got to say about that, guys. I um, hope to see you tomorrow on the live stream. I appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks. Ah-ah. Uh -uh.